This week's edition of Church Media Design TV is sponsored by Dan Zinkin Toner and the Gurus of Tech Conference. Welcome to another edition of Church Media Design TV, tips, tricks, and how-to for you, the church media designer. I'm your host, Brad Zimmerman, and joined with me is the fabulous foursome, it's the three wise men and Jesus. Three plus one equals four. Um, so, normally, and well, this week as well, I don't know why I said normally, every week we come to you guys with great ways to use media to leverage God's kingdom. So we want to advance the kingdom using media, and so we're going to talk about all sorts of things, and this week is no exception to the rule. We're going to be talking about portable church and ultra-portable stuff. So um, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully for any of you guys, this will be helpful whether you have a building or not. So if the three wise men and Jesus are ready, let's get into it. This is something old and something news and let's get into it. Something old that you maybe have already heard about and maybe have been to, but I wanted to make sure you knew about is the ISO 50 blog. Now this is the visual work of Scott Hansen and um, Scott does a lot of really cool kind of vector-based retro designs. Is uh, I'm sure he wouldn't like my, uh, my way of saying it. Now one thing, he did a Obama print um, for the campaign and it was this progress poster that got some um, big press and that kind of stuff but he's got a great blog and he just recently posted his thousandth post um, and so he's been posting for a long time and I really want to encourage you guys to check out his designs really cool stuff he's got a really great style the other thing is Scott is actually also a musician and he does Tycho music and um, he's really cool music to work to um, so I'd really encourage you guys to check out some of his music even just go to his website go to the Tycho music page and hit play it's a great place to listen to and um, Got a little music jam in here in the background, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's got a little electronic feel, but it's really chill music to listen to um, while you're working. So, really wanna encourage you guys to check that out. Now, something new is Churchy Media. Now, Churchy Media was a site that came out around the same time as Church Media Design TV. No relation in name or anything like that, but um, Dave, Churchy Dave, who uh, runs the site, um, recently transitioned jobs and has been doing some different things and their podcast has kind of um, slowed down but he still blogs on their website and recently he threw something out on Twitter and is actually coming into fruition he is going to be writing a ebook um, and this ebook is he wanted to make sure you guys understood a few things but um, he's gonna talk about how they built their media ministry and how they did it on a budget now that's one thing I'm hugely passionate about I'm really excited about this book um, and if you guys have any thoughts of like hey here's how we cut money and here's how we save send those in um, send those to me Brad at churchmediadesign.tv I would love to hear how you guys are saving money in your media uh, ministry as well as I want to pass those along to Dave so you can leave comments on his site as well so check out um, Churchy Media you can find that at churchymedia.tumblr.com and blog.iso50.com Well, this week I wanted to talk about Portable Church. Now, the church that I work for, we meet at a local high school. Um, we do our middle school ministry at another church. We do our high school ministry in our office. Our kids ministry meets in classrooms. We do outside events at a community center. We, um, we meet in a lot of different places. We have three trailers, four portable sound systems, or yeah, four portable sound systems and screens and projectors and the whole nine yards and we have to make this happen very fast. Now um, in the past I think we showed this little time lapse of uh, our church getting set up on a Sunday morning that I shot for a video last year. Now what happens is we have from 7 until 8 o'clock to get the entire room set up and get the band sound check so that the band has from 8 until about quarter to 9 to get themselves practiced to make sure all our levels are good and that they feel good with the environment because well the band practices in the basement of our office next to my desk 
Um, luckily, I'm not working during that time or else it would be a little awkward and loud. Um, but we just have to deal with a lot of that stuff and we need it to be done fast. So um, we have had to try devise systems to make sure we can do things quickly. Now, um, just so you get a rundown of how much stuff we set up, we have a full band, we run four monitors, two subs, two speakers, we have two nine foot by 12 foot screens with projectors, we black out four different sets of windows with black plastic, we set up over 300 chairs, and we set up uh, probably eight panels of pipe and drape, um, as well as two light trees with seven par cans because one broke like I told you a few weeks ago. So that's kind of what you're looking at. And then we have, you know, the computer and the soundboard and all that stuff. So that's kind of what we get set up. And we do all of that in about 40 minutes, as well as uh, we have some other volunteers who are setting up our kids area, which they have inflatable palm trees and they have a sound system and a screen for that area and the whole nine yards. So um, we, like I said before, have a lot to set up. So I wanted to show you guys a few things of how we make portable church work. Now, if you don't work in a church that is portable, this still applies to you because, well, you still have to store things. You still have to set up and tear down. You still do things in random parts of your church. You do things outside and you need to be able to move things. So this is going to help with that stuff. So the first thing I want to talk about is cables. One thing you deal with is you got a lot of microphones. We usually have, you know, bass, electric, acoustic keys, a couple singers, drum set. You know, we have miking for all of that stuff, plus monitors and speakers. So we have a lot of cables. And so how do we store all of these cables so that they're easy to get at, so they're easy to put away, and they're easy so anyone can do it? We have random volunteers helping us set up and tear down who know nothing about live sound. They don't know anything about cables. How can we make it easy for them? Well, what we did is we devised a spool system. Now, here is one of our awesome yellow spools. Um, this is actually our office spool. What we did is we went out and bought these spools that normally you see power cords on and we have all of our XLR cables on there. Now we can fit probably 20, uh, 10 to 20, 20 foot XLR cables on each spool. And what we do is we label every single cord. You can see this one has no label and there's no label on the cord. Um, we put uh, electric tape, so we'll label all of them with red electric tape and then we'll put red electric tape stripes around the outside of the spool and that means all of those cords go on this spool. Now what those um, those colors also signify is the length of the cable. Every red cable is 20 feet. We also have a blue spool that has cables that are five feet or less and those all go on a same yellow spool but it's got blue tape on it and so that we know what kind of cables go to what things. We also have spools for all of our projector cords. We have 110 feet of projector cord because we have to do weird things with the cables. But anyway, so we have 110 feet on two different spools. We have all of our power cords. We went out and bought um, gray three spot power cords. So there's a gray extension cord and then it has three outlets at the end of it. We interconnect, we always interconnect all of the cables. So all the XLRs are always interconnected together. The power cords are interconnected together. And what that allows for is when somebody starts pulling the cable off because it spins so it's pretty easy when somebody starts pulling the cable off if they're not interconnected all of a sudden this has happened to me before you have cables that start whipping you out and hitting you in the face not fun so that's the first thing you can do that to make sure that you have a great organization system and i think this would be an easy thing for backstage <clears throat> So like I was saying, you could do this for backstage. You could have your spools in your backstage room and just have all your cables coiled up there. It keeps everything nice and compact. It's really easy to get to, and it's really easy to know where things go because I know a lot of times backstage or on stage gets trashed at churches. So um, this is a great way to get, keep yourself compact. Now another thing we did for power is this. We actually bought these guys, and these are power cords with an extension cord all rolled up into one nice little mess and we got these from I think Home Depot and this is like 25 foot long and it has four power spots at the end of it now it's yellow it's not black so it doesn't blend in well but if it's hidden who cares 
And the nice thing about this is now I have everything contained in one. It rolls up nicely and it's my extension cord and my power strip all combined. So I don't have to have power strips and extension cords. I have everything in one deal. It's got a handle, easy to carry, easy to shove inside a case or wherever you wanna put it. So this is a nice, um, nice deal that we use around the office and we use with Surf City. Now one thing I wanna say is make sure you do your homework. Um, the next thing I'm gonna show you is a sound system that we just bought, and the reason we bought it is because Brad didn't do his homework. Now part of it was uh, some things that we didn't think were gonna happen, and part of it was because I didn't do my homework. Now what happened is we bought a sound system, we bought a Mackie 16 channel board with monitor sends, and we bought a 100 foot snake, we bought a, um, we actually transitioned our Sunday morning screen and projector down and got new screens and projectors for Sunday morning. And then we bought some speakers and we had this full huge sound system that was supposed to be used for kids on Sunday morning and then youth during the week. Now at this time, our middle school ministry was meeting in a place that didn't have a sound system and our high, uh, high school ministry um, didn't still need it, but if they needed it, we could use it for that in the future. Now. This was a great idea, except for I bought the heaviest and biggest piece of junk speakers I possibly possibly could buy. Um, they're phonic. Um, I would encourage you to stay away from these speakers. They are way too heavy for what they need to be. They're really not that much more um, inexpensive than anything else you're gonna buy out there, and they really aren't saving you any uh, help. Now, these have been uh, being used in our kids ministry for a long time. They're so heavy that they're getting beaten up badly. They um, are hard for volunteers to put on stands. They're hard. They're just a pain in the butt. And so the board is fine, but it was too much board for what they were using. All they needed was one channel. They needed the computer's audio and maybe sometimes a DVD player. They didn't even use a microphone. So they really needed two channels of sound. And even when we were doing youth stuff, I used at most three channels at that time because all the other stuff, we were in small rooms, we just used um, the volume from amps on the stage and all of that kind of stuff. So we only really needed a microphone and maybe an acoustic guitar. And so what happened is we bought too big of a sound system for what was really needed. So you really need to pay attention what is this equipment going to be used for? And what is it gonna be used for down the road and right now? How much money can we spend? And then be wise and spend some time doing your homework. So let me show you this next uh, piece of equipment we just bought. Now I'm gonna move my keyboard. Ugh. Pull this bad lad up here. Now this is um, hiding me most likely and we'll just uh, start pulling it apart here. This is a Fender. Um, what is this one? This is a Passport Deluxe PD 150 and on Musician's Friend, this is $500 and let's see here. Okay. Now, I'm actually going to get rid of one of these speakers. Okay. So then you can still see me. So what we got here is we have speakers that detach from the main soundboard. On the back here, there's actually a holder where all of the cables are stored. And all you do is run two cables from the, uh, from the mixer to the front of these speakers. Now, these cables are used to send power. The power amp is built into the soundboard. These are unpowered speakers, so all you do is run one cable to them, which is really nice. Um, and those are on the back here. And then you can see here, we have four channels. We have, um, we have three mic inputs, and then we actually have a stereo channel that we can run RCA plugs into. So you could run an eighth to RCA from your computer or run RCA cables from a DVD player or VHS player or something like that. So the amount of time that it takes to set this up is probably about five minutes, um, I'm guessing, or less. And this has exactly the amount of stuff we need. We can hook up VCR and a computer, and we could have two microphones for people to talk or a microphone and an acoustic guitar. So we still have everything we need. The cables are plenty long to get out there, and these are lightweight. You can't feel it, but these speakers are very, very light and they're really nice, they're really easy to use, and again, the system, the whole thing costs 500 bucks. It actually came with a mic and a mic cable as well. So 
the PD-150, it's a great deal. They also, on musiciansfriend.com, they have a 250, which is $7.99, and they have a 250 plus, which is $8.50, and they even have up to a 500 watt, which is $1,400. Now, I would probably only do the 250 or the 250 plus. I wouldn't jump up to that next one because that's when you really wanna just buy a regular soundboard and not this tower, because sometimes it's not the best, but, the nice thing is this thing is very lightweight. This actually w weighs less than one of those phonic speakers that I bought. And it is, uh, let's see here. This weighs, grr, why are you not going in? Anyway, we'll just take this down. I'll put it away later. But this whole thing together weighs a whole lot less than um, one of those phonic speakers that I used in the past. So again, a great deal it helps keep everything portable. Now I'll talk about a few other things that we've done to help keep things portable. Um, we use these huge black roller totes for all of our stuff for kids ministry. They hold a lot of stuff. They're made by Stanley. They're pretty inexpensive. Well, they're probably like 50 bucks a piece, um, but they're super durable. They got wheels on it. They got a pull out handle. They're very easy to tote in and out. Um, for Sunday morning, we actually built this case. It's called the Bob because the guy who built it with me, his name is Bob. So we named the case after him. And I'll have photos of this. This actually fits our snake inside of it. Our rack inside of it has a flip out hinge for the rack to sit on and the soundboard all fits in one and rolls in and out. And it makes it so we never have to plug in our snake into the board. It's always plugged in. All we have to do is roll it out. We just take our rack, set it up top and hook up the few cables. There's probably five to seven cables that we hook up and it's ready to go. And this makes it so it's at the right height for somebody to stand behind it and mix. And it also makes it so it's really easy to get it in and out. So um, that's another thing. And then we just made sure to buy good cases. Now we, we actually bought Viking cases, which aren't exactly, um, I don't think they're known as the best cases in the world, but they've treated us really well. And um, we've been going for five years now and they've treated us really well. But another place you can turn to is Portable Church Industries. Now, portablechurch.com, they cover and help people who are doing this kind of thing, and they'll get you the right equipment for the job, they'll get you the cases, the whole nine yards, and they know what it means to be portable. They'll make sure the cases are the right size, the right weight, all of that stuff. So this is another place to turn to if you don't wanna figure it out yourself, but in figuring it out yourself, you can try that way. Um, so. That's a little bit about Portable Church. If you guys have any questions about how we do Portable Church or what you should be doing in your portable situation or non-portable situation, send me an email, brad at churchmediadesign.tv. I would love to start a conversation about Portable Church because it's something I deal with every single week. And uh, it's something that I know pretty well because, well, I've had to know it pretty well. So send me an email, leave a comment on the website, and hopefully this helps you guys take one step in the right direction of getting yourself organized when doing a portable church. This week's inspiration is a site that you maybe haven't seen before, but definitely you know this guy's work. Now the website is mindscapefilms.com and Mindscape Films is a uh, site from Glenn Stewart from Australia. And yeah, we're talking about Australia and it's a church show, so we're probably talking about Hillsong. And you guessed it, right? And Glenn does a lot of stuff for Hillsong. He did the whole Hearts is One DVD. He's done the cover art. He did the With Hearts is One cover art. He did the cover art for a million different albums and a lot of different documentaries and a lot of different work that's coming out of Hillsong as well as a lot of other things. Now, um, Glenn just released his lookbook for Fall 09. Now, we'll pull this up here and um, Adam will throw some of these stills um, out back. But um, the first thing is his, uh, I don't even know how to say this word, emolliation. It was a black and white um, short movie that him and another guy did for a film festival at, um, at Hillsong. Um, but then 
uh, We're All in This Together uh, documentary animation that he did that actually isn't even released yet. He said in his post that it would be being released uh, later, as well as you can uh, check out. This is a big PDF. You can see some of the stuff from with the Hearts is One live DVD, some really cool things in there, as well as um, Hope in Rwanda, which is just such a cool looking title. And you can see kind of in there, uh, he shows kind of how he got that look and what he did to the original footage and, and stuff. Um, as well as you can scroll way down here and he's got some cool stuff that he's been doing um, by himself just um, look into the air and this cool rocket um, launching deal and then this uh, let love rule poster which is really awesome um, and then some different logos that he's done for um, United and some different things so um, I really want to encourage you guys to check out Mindscape Films. they got some great stuff. This lookbook should be really inspirational of like, wow, that's kind of cool, and how did he do that, and just kind of break down the look of what he's doing on a lot of these different things, as well as he's hoping to come out with a magazine called Forum where he teaches tutorials of how to do some of this stuff, and I'm waiting, waiting, waiting for the day that that comes out because it should be amazing because he does use After Effects to do most of this stuff. It's not like he's using these weird high-end things that you've never heard of before. So check out uh, MindscapeFilms.com. Well, this week's freebie actually comes via the Creative MYK. Now, this is a site I talked about a long time ago. It's a forum and a place that you can post finished artwork for others to download for free and to post up artwork to get critique on and the whole nine yards. So you can find that at creativemyk.com. Now, I was looking through some of the artwork that was finished and I looked through the Photoshop files and I found this really cool um, trees with some clouds and it kind of has a Christmassy feel but also kind of just has like a kid's nighttime feel. And um, it was made by Matt Grubber and I just thought it was really cool and so I took it into After Effects and animated it and made the stars twinkle and made the clouds roll by and use some different uh, different things and it turned out pretty nice so I thought I would offer this to you guys got permission from Matt to give this out to everyone so download this we'll have it in widescreen and in full screen and you can head over to the Creative MYK and download the Photoshop file and I'll have a link to that on the website so um, Head over to the website, download this file, add it to your arsenal. Um, like I said, it's either a holiday-ish one or it would be a great um, kids one. It's got a very kind of uh, cartoony fun feel to it. So um, download this today. Okay, so uh, maybe you're the guy that your church looks to to make videos for the weekend service. And you're knocking it out of the park, but you want to get better. Or maybe you are the guy who puts up the dynamic sound mix every weekend for the worship service. Or maybe you're the person who's over lighting. Or maybe it's the sweet graphics on the bulletins or the screens. Or maybe it's making stage design, but you don't have much of a budget. Or maybe you just get to design the creative moments where your people get to meet with God. Well, the chances are you're going it alone. Because usually that's how us techies and creative people roll in the church. But we don't think it's right. We think we should be in community. And so that's what we're doing. We're bringing it all together at Gurus. On July 13th through the 15th, we're going to be meeting together in Louisville, Kentucky at Southeast Christian Church's new state-of-the-art facility called The Block. And it is going to be an awesome time where we bring together some of the greatest minds in the church world in lighting, sound, video, audio, creativity, not just to teach, but also to learn because we think you have something to offer too. It's a user group. So come meet with us. Coolest thing is it's free. I mean, seriously, where else can you go to get this kind of cool community for free? Get inspired, get challenged, get knowledge, get community. Gurus. Well, you just saw an ad for the Gurus Conference, which is one of our two sponsors this week. And 
We just want to say thank you to them for being a sponsor of the show, and we really want you guys to sign up and show up to Gurus. You can go to gurusoftech.com slash Louisville underscore event. Go there, find out information about the event, but you also can go there and sign up, and we really need people to sign up for this so they can know how many people are going to come and all of that kind of good stuff. So go to the website and sign up for the event. It's a totally free conference that you guys can be a part of, and what's better than free? So thank you to um, the guys over at Church Tech Talk and Gurus of Tech Conference. Now the other thing, our other sponsor is of course DansInkandToner.com. Now Dan's Ink and Toner is wholesale ink and toner. Um, you can get basically next day in the mail. It's super cheap and Dan will really make sure that your church is saving money. I know a lot of churches out there are not doing so hot in our financial times and this is a great way to save money um, every place you can. So check out Dan Zink and Toner. You can email him info at Dan or Dan at Dan Zink and Toner dot com and find out more or sign up for the wholesale program. Dan will give you a call and figure out what's best for your church. It could be a leasing program or the wholesale program or a full service program. So Call him up, find out more about what he has to offer because I think it could be great for you and make sure you mention that Church Media Design TV sent you. So, check out DanZinkandToner.com and the Gurus of Tech Conference. Well, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Church Media Design TV. Uh, like we talked about today, Portable Church, I just want to encourage you guys, if you have any questions or comments about that, or you have any ideas of how to do media on the cheap side for uh, uh, Churchy Dave's book or for a future conversation for the show, make sure to send that in, as well as the uh, CMD newsletter will be going out soon, so make sure you go to the website and sign up for that. You can just go to churchmediadesign.tv slash subscribe to subscribe for the newsletter, and you'll get behind-the-scenes info plus more freebies and good stuff. Um, the other thing I just wanted to randomly mention, Coldplay came out with a live album that was totally free. Go on the web, find it. It's great. Listen to it today. Good stuff. So what's better than free? So um, as for me and the three wise men, oh, how you can get in contact with me. You can get in contact with me through uh, my email, brad at churchmediadesign.tv, through Twitter, twitter.com slash cmdtv, which we're at like uh, 1,250 followers for the CMD TV account, which is pretty cool. Now we just need to get Adam up there. So follow Adam, Adam, Adam CMD TV. Um, you can follow him and he'll tell you when he's editing and how much he hates me and, all, and how much he's sick of editing or I don't know, whatever. Um, so you guys can check that out and uh, follow us on there as well as sign up for the newsletter. You guys know the way to stay in contact. Email, leave comments, the whole nine yards. So like I was going to say a second ago, as for me and the three wise men in Jesus, we're saying, see you later.